Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I have another viewer request video, this time talking about how you can implement Medallion data architectures in production with data pipelines. Um, so the reason why you, you might want to implement a Medallion architecture, and I'll get into what it is, um, is really to make sure you have a structured, repeatable way to process, cleanse, and structure your data efficiently. Um, and so the Medallion architecture, which also you know, might know as the multi-hop architecture, gives you a robust framework to achieve this by organizing your data into three structured layers, bronze, silver, and gold. And so what we're gonna do in this video today is understand, hey, what exactly is a Medallion architecture? What are some of its benefits? How can you implement it? What do each of those roles mean? Um, some different technical approaches you can use to defining a medallion architecture, and then also best practices for building systems that are resilient and scalable for production. So without further ado, let's get into it. So just for in terms of the basics, with medallion architecture, you have those three distinct layers. Um, and it really is a process in which you're just trying to define, hey, what are the different steps that my data needs to go through before it's ready for BI and ML activities? Um, as everyone that's worked with data know, most of the work to getting your data you know, ready for BI or for a dashboard is actually cleaning it, taking that raw data and turning it into a format that can be you know, read and consumed by downstream users and applications. And so really, you want to think of this as just a layered data processing and organizational framework where you have your data segmented into those three distinct you know, bronze, silver, and gold layer. And within each of these major layers, you have bronze layer first, which is the raw, unprocessed data. It's just derived from source systems. And this is where you're still gonna preserve this data in its raw format for auditing, for exploratory analysis, and use this as you know, your initial source of truth. Then your silver data layer is going to process this data, address things like quality issues, like duplicates, missing values, standardizing and integrating data sets still trying to preserve as much raw data as possible, but removing things that could cause downstream issues when actually trying to use this data, and also making sure that the data fits into a standard format so it can be easily consumed again by those downstream systems. Then, the last step before the data actually arrives in those downstream systems is the gold layer. And the gold layer is really built around de delivering ready-to-go, analytics-ready, curated data sets that are optimized for querying, reporting, and even advanced applications like machine learning. Um, and this kind of architecture is really useful because it allows organizations to progressively refine their data. Um, so you have accuracy, traceability, and usability at every stage because sometimes you might want to use the raw data. You don't want to have super processed data, um, especially for things like ML tasks or testing against raw data. Um, and so by having each of these three layers, you can pull data from the layer that makes the most sense for your use case. And then also by decoupling raw data storage from refined data sets, you have much better scalability and modularity um, in your workflows, which makes them much more efficient because you can pick and choose which data you want to pull from instead of only being uh, confined to using refined data sets. So it's really ideal for complex, large scale data ecosystems. So that's kind of the overall picture of how Medallion works. Now I want to go into each of the individual layers and talk about how you might want to implement them. So here you have a kind of much more granular graph of what's happening within the Medallion architecture. So we can start talking about the specifics of each layer. So first you have your bronze layer and your bronze layer is really just a landing zone for raw data. Um, and the most critical component of designing this layer is making sure that it can handle diverse data formats. So things like JSON, Avro, Parquet, um, really just any, any type of raw data that you might be using, this layer should be able to handle um, to enable schema flexibility. So you don't need to make any changes to the data to make it conform to the bronze layer storage uh, setup. And so this ingestion process will typically rely on tools like Apache Kafka, Apache NiFi, um, or more, you know, more cloud native tools like AWS Kinesis or Google PubSub to stream that data. Um, then, once it's ingested, that data can be stored in different distributed file systems, you know, something like S3, Azure Data Lake, uh, Google Cloud Storage, typically. Um, mainly, a, you know, data lake type architecture here because, you know, that's really what you're building here, is a data lake to store all your raw data. Um, and another thing that's important here is traceability 
through metadata management. You're gonna to need to have really good metadata management to keep track and make good use of all of this different, these different you know, pieces of raw data. Um, and so tools like Apache Atlas or Glue Data Catalog can be employed here to maintain schema tracking and then also data lineage. Um, an example of how this is useful is you might have a pipeline that ingests IoT sensor data that stream via MQTT, then use Kafka as a buffering engine, and then Flink for real-time data processing and ingestion. Um, and then that data that's partition, partitioned by event time can be stored as parquet files within an S3 bucket, uh, making it really easily queryable from later stages. Um, and that's really kind of the bronze stage in a nutshell. It's just building a raw data lake that your other layers can build on top of. Then you have the silver layer. Um, and the silver layer is where that raw data goes through uh, initial ingestion, transformation, and cleansing. Um, so this layer is going to address issues like missing values or duplicate records or different formats. Um, and this is where you're gonna use transformation frameworks like Spark or DPT or you know, even Pandas or Polars um, to you know, give you flexible and scalable transformation engines to process those different diverse data sets. Um, and a really, really integral part of the silver layer is data quality checks. This is a layer where you're going to want to integrate tools like grid expectations or SODA to validate that schema consistency after it's been cleaned, detect any anomalies that might not be caught just by a simple metal check, um, and also enforce more complex business rules um, that you, know, you aren't just going to be solved by a simple SQL check. Um, and additionally here in this stage, you're probably going to want to look at using columnar storage formats like Delta Lake or Apache Iceberg um, so you can support versioning, ACID compliance, and again, efficient querying downstream. And so a simple example of how this, uh, this layer would work is you ingest some raw sensor data from the bronze layer, transform it using Apache Spark, and that process might be you know, deduplicating records, normalizing timestamps, filling missing temperature values, um, and then the resulting cleansed and normalized data set will then be stored in De Delta Lake, ready for aggregation and enrichment within the gold layer. Um, and then, so some people like to break out a platinum layer. I think platinum and gold really just combine in a single layer. Um, I, I don't think platinum layer is dis differentiated enough to really deserve its own layer, um, but it is that here in this kind of graph because this was the most complex medallion architecture I could find. Um, and so even though you see platinum, just think about this all being as part of the gold layer. Um, and the gold layer really represents the pinnacle of medallion architecture. Um, it contains the uh, really curated data sets that are optimized for analytics, for advanced applications. And this layer is really just designed to cater to those specific use cases, uh, powering dashboards, enabling business reports, doing predictive modeling. Um, this is really where you're gonna take your data that's ready for BI and functional use. Um, and then transformation process in the gold layer is typically going to involve things like complex aggregations, enrichment with external data sets, joining data sets together, um, advanced calculations. And you can also you know, use things like DBT to manage those SQL transformations and materializations, while databases like Redshift, Snowflake, BigQuery are probably where you're going to want to serve the curated data sets um, now that you actually have curated ready to use data sets. Um, so an example of how this layer would work is you take some of that clean data from the silver layer and then apply calculations like aggregating the daily averages of those sensor readings from the IoT data, um, enriching external weather information, um, and then also do feature, further processing to create feature stores for machine learning models. Um, so you know you know, can figure out what the predictive values of these from these IoT devices. Um, and then storing all that final data set in Redshift or BigQuery, where that can either you know, update a consumer-facing dashboard or just making it available to machine learning engineers so that they can then use that to run more complex models on. So that's really all the different layers in a nutshell. Now I want to talk about some best practices and technical uh, considerations for actually implementing all this in production. So here we have a view of what this setup might look like if you were, for say, using all Microsoft products. Um, and so just going to use this as kind of a talking point for some of the technical considerations and best practices you'll want to implement here. So number one, in terms of technical considerations, implementing this medallion architecture really requires careful selection of the tools and technologies, specifically the ones I've kind of mentioned throughout this. Um, but Really, you're going to want to be using cloud native platforms um, like Databricks, 
uh, for distributed processing or AWS Glue for serverless transformations to make sure you have the scalability necessary for a system like this. Typically, on-prem will just have too much overhead for impending this, you know, especially if you're doing data streaming. There's going to be you know, periods where it's really fast, periods where it's really slow, and you want to be able to adjust your services that are running for those times. Um, and so using cloud resources like you know, AWS Glue, um, like Kinesis, PubSub, um, Databricks um, for you know, turning your Spark clusters on and off, um, Snowflake if you want to do some you know, last mile transformation also for storing your data sets. Really easy, just, hey, you want to introduce, add more data to Snowflake, pay more. Um, so you just want to make sure you're using tools that you can easily grow from. Um, and then also things like Delta Lake, Apache Hootie can help ensure robust version control, scheme evolution. Um, you're probably going to want to have some kind of data lake provider serving as your bronze layer um, because that's really what a bronze layer is. It's a, it's a data lake by another name. Then to kind of build the pipelines of data that go through these different processes, that's where you're going to want to look at orchestration tools like Apache Airflow. Um, that's really probably the best solution for this. Um, it gives, it'll be able to play nice with all the different systems you need here. It's able to handle all the diverse data sets. It's able to plug into pretty much any system you're using. Um, and then also give you that single view of your data as it goes through the systems, collect the lineage on it, um, and then visualize that lineage as well to make sure you have consistent and timely data processing. And then outside of just, you know, hey, technical considerations, using cloud native tools, making sure everything's scalable, um, you're also going to want to follow a few different best practices. Um, number one, comprehensive metadata management. It's really crucial for data lineage, for data discovery, traceability. Having that catalog of data that you can go through and you know, pull just the information you need is, is crucial to running an effective uh, medallion architecture. And also, adopt robust data governance policies. Make sure you're using things like role-based access controls, compliance, regulations like GDPR. Make sure your data is secure, especially at the uh, raw Delta Lake level. If you're working on any kind of modern industry, make sure you have the proper uh, controls on that raw data. Um, and then finally, consider using a monitoring and observability tool like Prometheus, Grafana, to help you, you know, give you a monitoring pane of glass for all the different tools, how, you know, how your pipeline's health are doing, identify any bottlenecks, any slowdowns, um, and then also implement testing strategies, so things like unit integration tests uh, to your data to make sure that you're testing your data at every stage of your pipeline um, to, you know, make sure your data is flowing properly and ensuring pipeline resiliency and its reliability. Uh, but that is really all I have you today about Medallion Architectures. They offer a really structured and scalable approach to designing data pipelines um, and just give you a good framework for how you can organize the different stages of your data to power your business. So I hope you've learned a lot from this video. I hope this helps the person that commented. Um, and if there's anything else you want to learn, drop in the comments below. But above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.